Hi there, and welcome to this webinar where I want to talk about how you're going to maximize your efficiency in the March 2024 exam. Three weeks today, the March 2024 exam will be over for most of us. And so that you can do as best as you possibly can, I just want to give you a few pointers. So what do I want to say? Well, in terms of what I want to look at, very quickly, if you've never met me before or heard of me, I'll tell you a little bit about what qualifies me to talk to you, remind you what is the essence of SBL and what it's all about. Quick reminder about the format, quick reminder about how it's very different SBL to other exams, a reminder about how it's marked and why people fail. And then finally, what you need to do to maximize your efficiency in the actual exam. OK, so that's what I'm going to talk about um, in terms of what qualifies me to talk to you. So who am I? Well, I've been doing this for over 25 years. That doesn't necessarily mean that I'm any good, but I have been awarded the uh, UK Lecturer of the Year. I've been runner up for that a couple of times. If you go on the ACCA YouTube channel, the ACCA website, the ACCA Student Accountant, you'll see lots of articles, webinars, advice um, on SBL that the ACCA have asked me to give as I'm their expert tutor. And um, yeah, I, I also run a course which is platinum approved, which is the highest level you can get. And you can check those out on the ACCA website. And, and why am I saying this? Well, it just kind of, I, I feel for you because of all of the so-called experts online. There's a lot of people online who, hmm, I'm not sure they really know as much as they claim to know about SBL. Yep, and I would question, is their website only credible? There's an awful lot of fake news. Some of what they say is plain wrong. Um, and if you don't believe me, put their name into the ACCA website. Are they running a platinum course? Do they have articles published on the ACCA website? If they don't, I would stay away. I would stay away. Anyone can say anything in this social media world we live in, but it doesn't mean it's credible. You know, the moon's made of cheese. Did you know? I've seen that online. Is it? I'll leave you to decide. Put my name into the ACCA website. Put Tom Clendon's name into the ACCA website. You'll find that there are lots of references which hopefully gives you confidence because it's got credibility. So my point is be careful of the experts online in the run-up to the exam. There's lots of information out there. Not all of it is true. Be careful. What is SBL essentially about? It's important that you get your head around this because it's crucial for you to relate to it and empathize with it in answering SBL questions. Yep. So I... I can tell you, but probably better if the examining team themselves tell you. And they basically talk about it being an integrated, blah, 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 an integrated exam um, where you are acting in the context of being a strategic leader. It's linked to the workplace and it's all about role play uh, and workplace context. Yep. So the reason I say that is if you are stuck on a particular question on SPL, think what would I do in the workplace? What would I say in the workplace? And often that is sufficient for you to be able to generate an answer. So um, it's not something where we regurgitate lots of technical fact. Yep. And that's because it's not a technical exam. It's an applied exam. And as a result, it's not something that we learn and regurgitate, but it's something that we understand and it's something that we need to have a confidence about so we can express opinion. Yeah, there's not necessarily always a right or wrong answer. And if we have done lots of questions and read and got feedback to those questions and look at how there are alternative ways in which we could answer a question, you hopefully will have that confidence. Yeah, I make my students do lots of mocks, lots of homework. I give them lots of feedback so they can see, yes, what they said is fine. But had they gone down another road and said this, that would also be fine as long as it was contextualized correctly. Okay. Right. 
Uh, what else? The exam format and style since September 2023, it has changed. I'm sure you're familiar. Um, and let's have a quick look. It's three hours, 15 minutes in line with the other strategic professional papers. That's 195 minutes. You've got 100 marks, 80 are technical, 20 are professional skills marks. You only need 50 to pass. That is all you need. You will get pre-seen information two weeks before the exam. I've recorded a video for the ACCA. You can find it on their YouTube channel, how to deal with the pre-seen information. Please have a look at that video. Uh, the exam will present you with three tasks, roughly a third, a third, a third. Make sure you are familiar with that. And also I've recorded another video for the ACCA on how to behave in the exam and how to manage it. Make sure you look at that um, video as well. That's on the ACCA website. And what you need to be able to do is demonstrate a professional awareness, but also uh, competence in dealing with some of the technical questions you will get. Although it's not a technical exam, it's an applied exam. Some of the questions will be asking you to evaluate the dynamics of a situation, which will be helped by application of some technical knowledge to help in your structure and planning. So that's your exam. Um, how is it different to other exams? It's massively different to other exams. Um, as I've said, it's not a technical exam. Um, it is a applied exam and you're behaving as a strategic leader in the workplace. You show professionalism. So professional skills marks may be for being skeptical, for showing commercial acumen, for using evaluation, for communication skills, which you would obviously tailor in accordance with who you are communicating with. So it's a very, very different exam. Um, I would suggest in your final weeks of consolidating your knowledge, try to create your own mind maps of how everything links together. There is information on the ACCA website, but the things that you do yourself are much more powerful and stay in your memory for much longer. So that would be what I'd suggest you're doing in the next three weeks, consolidating knowledge that you've obviously been acquiring over the last few weeks or months, and then making it in a pictorial uh, visual, which helps your brain much better than, you know, just learning lists. Uh, what else? Well, it's interesting to know how SBL is marked. Yep. It, it, the reason I go into this is other papers you've done, one and one is two. Yep. It's pretty straightforward. And often those more technical papers are marked by a computer because there is no debate. Whereas on SBL, there are many ways in which you could get credit for an answer. And how is that dealt with by the ACCA? Let me explain. So this is a quick overview of the marking team, the marking principles, and a bit on professionalism and professional skills. So what we have, a marking session lead, another word would be maybe an examiner. That person will be accountable to a technical person from the ACCA, and that marking session lead will have working for them a number of team leaders who manages groups of markers. So you sit your exam, which will have been written by your marking session lead. And what will happen is uh, a draft marking guide would have been created. Yep. But it will not have been finalized. So... Um, they will kind of mark some scripts, draft a marking guide, and then what they will do is they will um, get some markers to the, some of the, the rather the, the, the leads will come together and will collectively agree on a definitive marking scheme. That marking scheme will then be used to educate the markers and the markers will be given some sample scripts which they need to mark. And if their marks are not in line with what the examiner expects to be happening, they will be trained until they understand exactly where and where not marks will be awarded. So once that has happened, we have uh, markers approved and they can start marking. But the scripts that they mark will be checked by what are called seeding scripts, which are scripts for which the examiner plants amongst student scripts. 
and these will check that the marker is still marking to exactly the same standard. So the reason I say all of this is that marking is extremely fair, yep, and consistent, yep. So um, the principles of it are suggested answers are examples of strong answers, but not necessarily the answers you need to give. And if you read the small print where you get answers, it does say that. And answers on uh, the, the official ACC answers are often very long. Um, and it says these are not meant to be representative of what a student could do. They also have a tutorial purpose. Yep. And, you know, credit is given for any relevant answer. Yep. And there is no negative marking. Remember that. And if you're worried about your spelling, your grammar, as long as it is able to be understood, there will be no penalization for that. So there's your basic principles. What else? <clears throat> I would suggest that you're not really going to get any more than two marks a point and you're only going to get two marks a point if you are able to fully develop your answer. Yep. So think about that. Um, the marking is not about regurgitating or saying it's gone up or it's gone down. It is of an intellectual level, which is uh, the highest possible. I'll explain that in a moment. And they're not generic answers you want to give. You need to give contextual answers which relate to the case. So in terms of an intellectual level of marking, which the exam needs to stand up to, uh, there's, a, there's a science called Bloom's Taxonomy and the level of examination of SBL is at the top level of evaluation and synthesizing. So that's not just regurgitating. Synthesizing is you take information and you connect it together and draw a conclusion. That's what is meant by synthesizing. Um, what uh, well there you go just a bit more of a description of what these intellectual levels have to be um you, you know you you have to put your own spin on things not just lift it out of the case and maybe say oh it's high or it's low you need to say more than that so the important question why do people fail sbl to be honest they fail it for pretty much similar reasons every time. And as long as you can understand this and avoid this, you will pass the SBL exam. Okay, I'm assuming the people that have marginally failed will have done an appropriate amount of study, but they still fail due to poor time management, to, due to ineffective reading and planning, due to poor business writing skills, and for not actually crafting an answer relevant to the professional skills marks that are being awarded. So you need to watch out for that. OK, so what would we do to use our time effectively? Well, the most important thing you would do is you would have a budget. Yep. And to create a time budget, I would suggest the following. Yep. You have three hours, 15 minutes, which is 195 minutes. If we take about 35 minutes for reading and planning, that leaves us with 160. We have 80 professional, sorry, we have 80 technical marks and 20 professional skills marks. The professional skills marks take no time to acquire. So we divide our 160 minutes by 80 and we end up with two minutes a mark. So that is your budget for your exam, two minutes a mark. And if you do that, you will be in control of your time. And as I say there at the bottom, it's a project management exercise in mark acquisition. Once you've got your budget, it's important to write down start and finish of each subsection of a task and keep checking that you are on schedule. Yep, they, the video I created for the ACCA, I give a little graph about how time management can really wreck your exam chances. So have a look at that as well. Uh, what else? Well, uh, how do I deal with the scenario and uh, the exhibits? Well, pre-seen material released two weeks before. Make sure you follow my video recorded for the ACCA on how to deal with the um, pre-seen material. On the exam day, you'll get some more information and three tasks. I would, and, and more exhibits. 
So I'd probably read the tasks and then I would look at each of the exhibits to make a connection. Um, when reading it, I'm breaking it up. I'm probably highlighting it. Um, I'm trying to visualize what's going on. I'm trying to picture it. I'm trying to think, you know, how is this manifesting itself in real life? That is the kind of mindset I want you to be adopting. OK, if you do that and if you practice this ACCA, if you can't do maybe a mock exam with someone who gives you lots of feedback, there are mocks available on the ACCA website. Please make sure you're looking at those. Um, how do I read and plan? Well, the danger in exams is because we're a bit stressed, we have a stress chemical and that makes us behave in weird ways. Um, so there's, there's a few things I'd like you to do, but um, reading the question more than once, having some headings. Uh, I would do this in the word processing area of the exam, not the scratch pad. Um, I'd be looking at what the keywords are, what the answer format is. Very important that we do that. What's the verb, what you're asking us to do. Sometimes we just see the first half of an answer and that's because of the rule of and. Uh, so we need to read it once and this is, oh, it says an and. Yep. So in previous exams, there was a question where it said, what are the benefits and drawbacks in determining future aims and objectives? A lot of students, when they answered this question, didn't see the drawbacks and didn't see the objectives. It just is what happens in exams sometimes. Yep. Be careful. The marking guide, What when I say spot the marking guide, the answer you give needs to be reflective of the marks that are available. Yep. So here we're thinking about where are we going to get marks for uh, or from in um, discussing whether the objectives of directors of a quoted company are likely to conflict with those of the company's shareholders. OK, what have we got there? Well, let's say about four for objectives of directors, about four for shareholders and maybe up to four for the conflict. But the maximum we're going to get is going to be 10 marks. And to pass it, we need five marks or more. Yeah. So don't get too stressed about getting 100 percent. You don't need it. You need to get over 50. OK, so hopefully that is useful. Um, what else do I want to say to you? Well, in terms of concise business writing, um, it's a bit in use the analogy when you meet someone for the first time. Yep. You know, you talk to them in a clear way. Yep. You speak clearly. Yep. You don't start off with a ridiculous opening statement. Psychologically, that's not great. Yep. So subheadings and white space are the key things you want to make sure you do. And when you planned and you did a bullet point, you can then copy and paste that into your answer and expand that to give an explained answer where you deal with the so what and you deal with the why and the consequence, the reason of why you've just said something. So white space, this, mm, it says the same thing as this. This is a lot easier to answer. And psychologically, when a marker is under pressure, it's probably going to give more marks to the white space. Not always, but you run the danger of losing your points in a big blob of information. Um, so be careful. Um, what else does the examining team say we should be doing? Well, I say this all the time, so I'm not saying this. This is the ACCA examining team, and they say that sitting a mock exam, which is in a time um, kind of allocated process, is the most important thing you can do in preparing for your ACCA exam. I say that. The examining team says that. Why will you not do that? Yep, it, I'll, I'll give you some reasons of why you should do it in a moment, but that is absolutely crucial. The other thing that's crucial, if you're not familiar, is your familiarity with the computer based exam platform. Yep, understand the functionality of things like slides uh, and spreadsheets. It's, it's not Microsoft Excel, it's not Microsoft Word. You must, must check it out. Okay. So what do I think you need to do to maximize your efficiency in the exam? Well, 
first of all, I think you need to get your head in the right place. And do you have a reason why you are taking it? What is success in this exam going to look like for you? That's going to carry you through the next three weeks. So if you haven't got that clear, get some clarity on it. Yep. Really important why you are taking this exam so that you are fully motivated to do so. What would I say here that could help you? Well, there's quite a few. I've written a series of six articles, put my name into ACCA, student accountant, and there's six long articles talking about exam preparation, which will hopefully help you. Yep. Have a look on my YouTube channel if you like to listen to podcasts. There's lots of stuff on there. It's all free. You don't need to pay for it. What else? Um, well, I would say the most important thing, I'm in agreement completely with the examining team, is practice a mock exam to time on the ACCA platform. Why would you do that? Well, I would ask you the following questions. Yeah, I would say, would you learn to swim by reading a book? I would ask you, would you learn to drive by reading a book? Yep. Why do football teams play friendlies before big tournaments? Well, they do it to iron out all their mistakes before the big game. Okay. And the best way to iron out your mistakes before a big game is to do a mock two time. Yeah, on the platform. Uh, on the platform, you you, they, they, you can't um, put the time in. You just have to use a stopwatch. However, I actually do a mock where I, um, with various technology, I'm able to make a timed mock exclusively for you on your ACCA registration. Yeah, so you go on there. It uses the uh, the pre-seen material that will be released two weeks before the exam. So I don't go to sleep for two or three days to create a pre-seen related mock. The questions you will have never seen before. Uh, it's on the platform. So you will, in order to do well, have to have familiarized yourself with the functionality of the platform, the slides, the word processing area, the spreadsheet area. I get real ACCA SBL markers to mark it because they're the ones that are going to mark your exam. I don't just say you got 10. I give you lots of feedback on what you did well and where you need to improve. I give a full video debrief on what other people did right and wrong and where some students did really well and where you could do better. Uh, we have a Zoom. We have uh, discussing it. We have a WhatsApp support that you can Talk to me every day right up until the exam. Lots and lots and lots of stuff to help you. Yep. What else? Uh, I give you links to lots of useful videos. Yeah, a lot. Anyway, that's up to you. I, personally, when I was doing... So let me go back to what we have there. Just to, when, when I was doing um, my accountancy exams... I wanted them out of the way as quickly as possible. I wanted to be earning a qualified salary as quick as possible. I'm sure you do too. So therefore, do a mock. Yeah. How can you do a mock? Well, you can look at the sign up here. If there are still places, there, as, as the time of recording this video, there are still places. But be aware that because of marker limitations, uh, it, there's, there's a limit to how many people can sign up. OK, so what are you going to do then in the next three weeks? Three weeks today, it's Tuesday whilst I'm recording this. Uh, the exam will be over for most of us. So this webinar is really only of any value if you actually do something and um, take action. Yeah. So what are you going to do? Well, I think you need to establish that. But what I'd say to you is what you need to do in implementing some of these ideas is first of all get organized so by that I mean get a timetable of how you live your life for the next three weeks every hour of waking and sleeping should be managed you should break your study and your life into manageable chunks so it's important to have fun rest you've got to do a bit of work but also a bit of study you've got to 
relax, practice some mindfulness. There's an app on Spotify for free called Headspace. It's also important to flush out that cortisol by, you know, doing some exercise. Think carefully about your diet. You know, don't have big glycogen dumps by, you know, uncomplex carbohydrates. That's it's just going to make you sleepy and not great for you. So, yeah, think about those things. They are really important. Okay, so three weeks to change your life. You can change it. You are in charge. You are the architecture of your future. Do something about it. Okay, you can contact me uh, via these um, areas here. And don't forget, keep your eye on the prize. It's all over in three weeks. You're going to be a qualified accountant sooner than you think. But you have to do something for the next three weeks. Thanks for listening. Any questions, drop me a WhatsApp and I wish you all the best.